Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll give an introduction of QualysGuard Vulnerability Management. Alright, so in this video, we're going to discuss QualysGuard and how it operates as a software as a service. We'll briefly discuss the QualysGuard infrastructure and how as users will interact with Qualys. Finally, we'll talk about the vulnerability management lifecycle, which is vital to understanding the inner workings of QualysGuard. We have various types of users who might have different perspectives when interacting with QualysGuard. We have auditors whose focus may be on getting their organization compliant for a particular framework or regulation. The management team might be focused on understanding how well the vulnerability management program is working within their organization using QualysGuard. Are we seeing any progress over time? The security team might be responsible for building technical reports and distributing those to the operations team. They might be tasked with understanding the assets in the network and scheduling vulnerability scans for the entire organization. Finally, we have our operations team who will be involved with remediation as well. Typically, operations will be associated with patching vulnerabilities on hosts for which they are responsible. This is our 10,000-foot view of what Qualys looks like. And we'll start off here in the Qualys Guard Secure Operations Center. And this is where your scan data and map data are going to be securely housed. And here we have SSL encryption, firewalls, strong encryption, and IDS sensors protecting our information. Now next, we have our users here. And our user is going to log into their account via encrypted tunnel to their own slice of the pie within Qualys Guard. Now this is done using a browser by going online and logging into the Qualys Guard user interface. Great. Now next we have our external scanners. Now we are going to use these external scanners to scan our externally facing IP addresses, meaning our publicly routable IP addresses. The great part about this setup is we won't have to install any equipment, nor will we have to download or maintain any software. Qualys can do all of that for us. As soon as we log into our account, we are ready to scan our externally facing IP addresses. Now along with those external scanners, we have internal scanner appliances. We can use internal scanner appliances to scan our internal or private IP addressing. So those IP addresses that are in the RFC 1918 space, or ones that are not accessible from the public internet. And we'll need to install that scanner appliance in our network in order for us to be able to scan those private IPs. These internal scanner appliances come in both a hardware and virtual appliance. Anytime I'm launching a scan as a user, the job gets set up within my account in the Qualys SOC. The scan is then sent to the scanner appliance I've chosen for the job. If I choose to use an external scanner, it will use one of the shared or pooled scanner appliances Qualys has within the Secure Operations Center. If I choose an internal appliance, the service will send the job to the specific scanner appliance or appliances I've selected for that job. This is our Qualys Guard vulnerability management lifecycle. When we're operating within Qualys Guard, this is a very good model to keep in mind. It helps us understand where we are in the overall process. We have a few different steps here and we'll notice it's a circle. It's a continuous process. Because Qualys is continually adding new vulnerability signatures to the Qualys Guard knowledge base, we'll need to have an ongoing vulnerability management program. You might be copied on notifications from Qualys every time the knowledge base is updated with new signatures. You might also be aware that Qualys updates the knowledge base pretty regularly, so it's imperative that we stay on top of this process. So the first step within the Qualys Guard lifecycle is the discover phase. With this step, we are learning about our network. What hosts do we discover by plugging in a domain or net block? And what is our operating system? How are these hosts segmented? So the idea is to get a better picture or some more visibility into our network. Next, 
we'll want to organize and prioritize our assets. And we'll find now that we have a couple different ways we can do that. One way is with asset groups. We place our assets into asset groups to better organize them. Instead of having to refer to them as IP addresses throughout the user interface, we can give our assets names. We can also associate an importance value with those, or what we call business impact, for each group we create. We can also use asset tagging, which we'll discuss in further videos. Now the third step is the assessment phase. This is where we actually scan our devices for vulnerabilities. Lots of information goes into our scan results. The scanner scans our intended targets for vulnerabilities and sends them to the Secure Operations Center where they are processed. Now we may find that the information discovered during the scan may not be extremely consumable in the raw scan format. So within the fourth step, we use reports to format the data we already have in a way that makes sense for an intended audience. We can use reporting to help us focus on specifics within our scan results. So with reporting, we are essentially taking our scan results and pushing them through a filter so we and our audience can focus on a specific set of information. We can build a report perhaps on how many vulnerabilities we resolved in the last 30 days. We can schedule a report to occur weekly so that we can see the latest and greatest information pulled from our latest scan results. And perhaps the report only contains patchable high priority vulnerabilities. We can alter these reports as necessary so they contain information relevant for the audience viewing them. Typically when a report is constructed, we have some sort of audience in mind. Maybe it's management or operations. Reports will change based on who's looking at the report. Next is the remediation step. We are resolving the vulnerabilities found in the assessment phase. Remediation is a major part of the life cycle. Within Qualys Guard, we'll point you to the solution if one exists. We'll see that we can build a remediation policy that will create tickets for a specific set of vulnerabilities. Finally is the verification step. We want to go and verify that the vulnerabilities we originally found when we ran our scan are now fixed. Did we remediate like we were supposed to? Was our fifth step effective? The way we can check is by scanning again and verifying that those vulnerabilities are now gone. This is the overall life cycle. This is something that we'll want to continually think about when working within Qualys Guard and through these videos. Thank you for viewing this introductory video on Qualys Guard Vulnerability Management.